There are quite a few people on oh, shit, already. Really? What the fuck? Natasha, Brittany, Christina, Damn. Sydney, Brandon. Jesus Lord. Um, everyone knew that Jen was going to be here today, so they were like, "Oh, that's fucked up." <laughs> that's true it's too, Jen. man. It's it's true. Oh, well, thanks, whatever. Alex. Alex says we all look delightful this evening. Is that because oh. you're already super drunk? Because you're you're a lot of drinks in over in the UK. Is that why? Because it's it's uh, appropriate mm. time to drink over there. Natasha says we missed you, Jen. In all caps, miss you guys too. Yeah. What's up, Chris? What's up? Corey? Good Lord. Oh, my God. Shit. Maybe I should put a story together real quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's good to see everyone. All right. Well, well, Jen, we everyone needs to hear about the bachelorette party. Like why you were you you were absent I last was, week. I was absent. And this is just a short stay for now because I will be not in the studio for the next couple of weeks after today. So. Um, it was good. It was chill. We went to Martha's Vineyard. I flew back home on Friday. My sister picked me up from the airport. She had a half and eaten sushi roll she gave to me so I could like have something in my stomach. And then we went out and, um, I only had five beers, but somehow blacked out and fell asleep on the bathroom floor. Actually, she said I fell asleep with my head in the toilet and would not lay on my side. Um, But that's why I woke up on the bathroom floor. She did give me a pillow and a blanket. That's nice. Yeah, that was nice. But I was pretty miserable the next day because I was sick. So um, we went to Martha's Vineyard. We went to um, an alpaca farm. And then we went to... Is there an alpaca farm on Martha's Vineyard? Yes. It's called Island Alpaca. I didn't know that. And I I felt really bad because I I was going to get you guys something... But yeah, because that'd have been nice, Johnny Llama, you know. But it was not. I see, and here's here's my thought. <laughs> What's the difference? Do you because know? they are slightly I, different. They are they're different animals. Um, the alpaca is related to a camel, whereas the llama is not. I think um, it's kind of set, like kind of like um like donkey and mule, you know, right? Like very similar. And the reason I didn't get anything was because if I got something from the alpaca farm, I would have said, here, John, it looks like a llama. And you would have said, but it's not a llama. No, I'm we Johnny get a, Llama. We do get a lot of alpaca things all the time. But I, I brought back something for the group to try um, some coffee syrup from Rhode Island because that's the state I have in Rhode Island. I can't even tell you the last time I had coffee milk. Um, well, like, I, I, honestly, probably before I was even a teenager. Like, yeah. I really haven't had it in such a long time. But I didn't, I do feel bad. I did want to get stuff, but also, like, I was playing with um, not having any money. So <laughs> I really couldn't afford to get anything. You don't have to get us. I, I know. I know I don't, but I always do think of you guys. And I did take some pictures of the alpacas to show you. Um, post them on the Discord later. I will post them on the Discord later. Uh, let's see. We actually have a surprise shot request for Natasha Ooh. today. We have a long list. I was actually just counting how many. Um, Brandon, I know you're on here. I've got your request down. But we've got like one, two, like 15 um, that were like teed up ready. Not all of them are specific, but I do have a few specific requests. Let's do them all today. Lined up. <laughs> <laughs> and Jen stays over tonight. Um, <laughs> I have nothing tomorrow, so that, that's totally fine. There as long you go. As- um, because we had have had quite a, a few new joiners. Um, we've got Christy, Lauren, Griffin, and Rebecca. This is a Talk Mermaid podcast. I'm sitting here with Jen and Nicole. Uh, this, if you're new here, I got a lovely story for you today. We're also doing a another story after this for our Supremos. So you can stick around, go to talkmurder.com slash join and become a Talko Supremo. If not, then uh, just know that we put out episodes every Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I blog at talkmurder.com so you can go and see all the cool stuff there. And I think that's about it. All right. Ready? This one's for Natasha. Wait, what is it? Oh, wait. It's a surprise. (laughs) Shit. Is this your first day? Look at my bongos. Yeah, you need some new ones, man. We need to bring the parking lot (gasps) bongos. All right. It's time for the parking lot bongos to come back. I guess so. (laughs) Uh. Surprise shots. Surprise shots. We don't know what they are because they're a surprise. 
What the fuck is this in it here? It looks like a brain, and I Dude, don't like it. You don't put physical objects in shots. It's not a physical <laughs> object, but this one's for you, Natasha. This is a specific request. I think it's going to taste good, because I'm pretty sure this is Bailey's, because that's what Bailey's does in the alcohol, but... <clears throat> oh, fuck. It's like eating something. What the fuck? I choked on it. Actually, it was kind of good, Is though. that bubble gum? It, you know what it is? It's the combination of the peach schnapps and the grenadine that yeah. makes that flavor. But I literally... I, I'm sorry. I didn't it, mean to do that on camera. So, the, the Bailey solidified a little bit too long, I choked I on it. And I was ex- was not expecting it. That Wait, was not... What was... That was Bailey's? So, yeah. yeah, it was Bailey's. Because it was like milk, right? The shot is called the zombie brain. It looked like a brain. It did look like a brain in there. And it was peach schnapps... Creme de menthe, although I left it out because it was really only supposed to be used for color. Um, and I was like, oh, if I add mint to that, like. No, you can't do mint. I can't do very much mint. Um, Bailey's and grenadine. And I thought actually, like, I know the texture was kind of funky, but like flavor wise, that was really well, good. Well, it's similar to the c- components of the gummy bear shot. Yeah. Which we should make into a cocktail. cocktail. So I got a lovely story. This is a request from someone online to claim this one. Tonight we're going to Alaska, and if you know this story, don't spoil it, okay? I've been really structuring these to get the maximum effect, (laughs) so I don't want any spoilers, but just tell me who requested this. We are going to Alaska. All right, tonight we're going to June 29th, 2018. We are going to Alaska, and I have the Google Earth up here, so let's hope this thing works this time. (sighs) So far, so good, sort of. I want to go to Alaska. I've been. You know, my uncle used to live there. That's right. So I've been there. I want to. I would love to go too. I want to take an Alaskan cruise, actually. Yeah. I heard those are really nice. All right, here's where we're going to tonight 4704 Lake Spinnard Drive. So I want to say that uh, we are on Google Earth right now and we record these things live every sa- Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you're listening to on podcast, I'm going to put all the talk or I'm going to put all the photos of the crime scene and everything else on talkmurder.com. So go there and you can follow along with us there. But tonight we are going to 4704 Lake Spinner Drive. And it's right by the lake, obviously, Lake Spinnard. I like how all these houses have, like, planes. Like, they don't have boats, they have planes. Yeah, me too. So this is actually the spot. I don't know what happened. Oh, the house is no longer there. Yeah, so they did take that house down. So tell me. House of Horrors? But this is the the actual address right here. And it kind of backs up to an apartment building you see here. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't really look like they're high... Uh, high quality. They kind of look, um, I don't know. What it's not like a luxury thing. Yeah. And I was thinking, well, that's weird because it's right by the lake. But then again, isn't Alaska like a lake in itself? It's like Alaska's uh, an island. Oh. No, I know that. But no. with all the ice, it melts in this water. Is it attached? No, it's it attached. <laughs> <laughs> it is attached to Canada. Oh, right. That's right. Yep. Oh, shit. It's not attached. No, nah, don't worry about it. <laughs> it's okay it's all good no nope. it's not a lake no itself nor <laughs> is it an island just so, like we've cleared that up uh but hawaii right. is an island it's made up of several islands correct yeah but we got rid of hawaii we don't actually own that anymore that's not true that's false all right this is the guy we're talking about tonight if you want to please describe this for us, one of you people. Us people or those people? You people. But What's this guy look like? Looks like my uncle. Does he really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, describe the guy. I mean, no one knows who your uncle looks like. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> what the fuck? He looks like that. They can see the picture, can't they? <laughs> Um, so he, he's in his fifties. He, he is, his hair is thinning grayish, um, belly. And he's got, uh, five different remotes on a TV dinner stand. There you go. So, all right. So as I said, tonight we are going to June 29th, 2018, 4704 Lake Spinard Drive in Anchorage, Alaska, which I've been there it's pretty, it sucks. I mean, there's like no daylight. No, I thought it was all daylight. Or all daylight. I can't remember. It's all daylight. <laughs> oh my God, you guys. It depends on the time of year. That's what I said. God damn in it. The summer, in the summer, 
it is almost depending on where you are in Alaska, almost 24 hours of daylight in the winter. Mm. It is a lot of darkness. A lot of darkness, is, my yeah. old friend. I'm glad I'm here to keep y'all on it. All right, it is 1 a.m. in the morning, the home of Wesley Hayes Demarest. He is 67 years old. Now, he does have a male roommate. That man is unidentified because he was home at the time. But he ran away, which I would too, honestly. Well, no, I, let me take that back because I sound like a pussy. I would just <laughs> <laughs> forget what I said that 10 let seconds. Let me say something that makes me sound manly. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. All right. Ugh. It's 1 a.m. The home of Wesley Hayes Demarest. Jen, stop petting my dog, please. 67 years old. He is there with one male roommate. He's sleeping. He's in his underwear. That was part of the reports. That was apparently very important. Mm. He hears glass shatter, which wakes him up. Now, this is 1 a.m. in the morning, I said. He comes out of his room in his underwear and... He, is he a tidy whitey or a boxer or a boxer brief kind of guy? What did he look like? He looks like your old grandpa. I don't know, tidy whitey? <laughs> I'm just saying. Pulled up to his nipples, probably, yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyway, he goes out of his room. He opens the door. Hello? Who's out there? Now, this may have happened before because I feel like Alaska just I feel like wilderness just breaks through your home like birds and Bears. Bears. caribous and shit. They just break through your house. So it, he may have thought it was something like that. Did you guys hear about the hybrid of the polar bear and the grizzly bears? No. Mm -hmm. Like the, it, like a new animal has formed? Mm -hmm. Interesting. What color are they? Just brown. Kinda, oh, brown? But they look like polar bears. Wait. <laughs> Like the like sh like facial shape wise because polar mm -hmm. bears kind of have an elongated yep. snout. Okay, I was like, what do you mean they're brown but they look like polar bears? My yeah. instant was like, no, they're white. <laughs> well, I think they have them in Alaska. How do brown Maybe. bears get up there? Brown grizzly bears. bears? You said oh, you said grizzly bears. Grizzly and polar. I think they're oh. called they're po called grizzly bears. Grizzly bears. I think you got to stop. I, you got to get off fucking TikTok, man. It wasn't on TikTok. Because it was on the Weather Channel. Your fake news is in. Trading. The Weather Channel did a whole report about it. <laughs> Natasha said she was just talking about this with her husband. <laughs> Thank so you. you know what? Someone else is well, watching you know, getting yeah. their news from the same source. It was it was the <laughs> Weather Jesus Channel. Christ. It popped up on my phone. Get off TikTok. It wasn't on TikTok. <laughs> It was right. the Weather Channel app. The 67-year-old man walks out of his room. He hears the glass shattering. Hello? Is anyone there? At the same time, his roommate steps out of his door. There's a man there in the doorway. So he had broken the glass With and let himself hands? in. No, he used an object, which I'm about to tell you what it is. Oh, was it a dildo? <laughs> what the? That's an interesting. <laughs> I don't know why that popped into my mind. Choice? I was trying to make because it. of the bachelor party, obviously. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. it was not. Tell a us what really happened. I did. It was. <laughs> it was very low key. It was one of those bear parties. Those are like the bear party. It's like the porn thing. Are not you talking about like the subculture of gay culture called the bears? No. Oh, what the bears? They're bear bear. They were like they're hairy. Like some guys identify like I don't know. I don't know. No, I'm not talking about that. Then what anyway. are you talking about? Pornography. About the stuffed animal thing? I'm talking about a, a genre of pornography oh. <laughs> that I've heard about. Stumbled across. <laughs> Stumbled in my uh, research on murder. Okay. But yeah, a guy shows up in a bear costume at a bachelor party. And then there's obviously cameramen too. And he's like, hey, everyone, let's have sex. And then it's like a porn. Oh, that's not what I was thought you were talking about. Nope. Uh, me neither. Dan yes, Lauren. Dancing bear review. And how the fuck do you know that? That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> He said Brandon it said it too. What? <laughs> don't, don't bring up Dancing Bear. What the fuck? And look, they all know it. Now this I is a guy know. thing. Now I need to know. <laughs> all the guys that are watching are like, oh, yes, of course. I've never seen it. I've never seen it. But yeah. I heard about, I heard about it from Brandon. I <laughs> <laughs> He's calling you out, Brandon. What the fuck? That was weird. <laughs> All right, let's get to this. This 67-year-old steps up. <laughs> and, and wait, hang on. I also have to... Chris wants to know, did you see Bustin' Beaver, the male stripper? No. Uh, Justin Bieber was recently um, diagnosed. Yeah, he's got monkeypox or something. No, he has some type of like paralysis in his face, some syndrome that causes paralysis. Yeah. Like permanently? It could if it's not treated. He's faking it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that would be really hard to fake. <laughs> All right, anyway... 
It's 1 a.m. He, This man, Wesley, hears the glass shatter. Hello? His roommate steps out of his room, and they are both standing there, and there is a silhouette of a man, a tall guy, and there's no lights on in the house, so they can just see the silhouette of this guy. And they see, and he doesn't move. He's just standing there. Like Paul Bunyan? <laughs> <laughs> Paul Bunyan, the giant lumberjack that had the big blue ox, mm-hmm. babe. Mm-hmm. He's just standing there. They can't see his facial features or whatever. In his hand, he has an object. And the whole time, he's just standing there. And they're like, what are you doing in our house? What? Who are you? He's holding something. And he said, is your name Wesley Demarest? That's the guy I showed you, 67-year-old. Mm-hmm. And then he says, quote, I'm here to collect what I'm owed. Oh. End quote. He then pulls up what they now know as a hammer, which is what he was holding in his hand. And that's how he broke the window. He pulls up this rusty hammer, points it at the other male, the roommate, the unidentified male. And he says, you get out of here. Damn. So the roommate books it obviously that's why i said i would too not because i'm a big puss <laughs> he tells this 67 year old man to get down on his knees no i won't do it get the fuck down on your knees this is what he's saying this man starts begging please don't do this i'm here to get what i'm owed he pulls out the hammer and starts bashing as hard as he can with his right hand the guy's on his knees hitting him right in the skull Bow, 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 five times. Now the guy is just on the ground. Wesley's on the ground in a pool of blood. He looked like a nice man. Like, I wonder what he could have <clears throat> gotten himself into. What did you say? I said he looked like a nice man. I wonder what he could have gotten himself into that oh, would have gotten Wesley. him severely mm-hmm. brutalized. Because he this was targeted. Well, yeah, they he said, hey, is your him. name Wesley Demarest? Right. I'm here to it's get... It's like w- instead of being served a subpoena, he's... Served. Served in a can of ass whooping. Yeah. Mm-hmm. From, that's what Steve Austin would say. Mm. So, Shammer Mama says, stop <laughs> hammer time. Yeah, I thought that was like a good title contender. <laughs> Damn it, that's good. I'm not giving you any credit, though. Fuck, I'll give you credit. I might use that. Maybe not. I will probably use that. Yeah. From the Anchorage Daily News, the next thing he remembered was waking up, slumped on the ground in a pool of blood. His attacker was gone. His roommate called 911. He's alive, but just barely. In fact, you can see him right here. Still alive, but I'm barely breathing. Oh. There he is. Oof. That's a shiner right there. If I've never seen one. God damn. Damn. That is. Oof. That looks like it hurt. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. He says, quote, I was only wearing my underpants. They were soaked in blood, completely soaked in blood. Paramedics got me on a stretcher and took me out of here. Wesley Demarest suffered a fractured skull. Staples in his head in the hospital for two weeks, a broken right thumb. His left eye, as you just saw in the photo, and I'll put that on the website, talkmore.com, was completely swollen shut. What's the left eye? And miraculously, did I say that right? Miraculously. There you go. Proud of you. Miraculously, he was still alive. But did he get hit aside from the eye? Like, yeah, the I eye? mean, they hit him. He hit that this attacker hit him in the skull and I guess maybe he missed one and hit him right in the eye. A fractured skull. I mean, that's a pretty freaking. The skull is dense. Yeah. Why would this guy be targeted? As a 67 year old, he volunteers at a lo- local church and his job is delivering motor parts. So like, what can he owe this guy? This random intruder, you know, the cops were dispatched, obviously. And in a local parking area, they come across this. This is a local parking area right here. They, this is just from Google Maps. They don't actually show you anything. But this is where he was. You see back in that uh, where it says dead end. Mm-hmm. So this is where the car was back in there, just idling. His Honda Civic was idling, the, the killer, the attacker. And they arrest him. Now, this is the attacker right here. Can you describe this guy? He's got a teardrop tattoo, right? Well, you tell me. I don't know. Does he? It looks like it. (laughs) He, You know, he kind of looks like your cousin. No? He almost looks like Ben Stiller. What? Like if Ben Stiller is playing a character. No, man. All right, fine. Um, okay, so he's got like very like sunken eyes in into his face and thin cheekbones. 
Long brown hair pulled back into a ponytail. Flicked back slimy. Uh, and a teardrop tattoo on his left eye. That is Jason Vukovic, a 41-year-old male. Now, he was arrested. Obviously, the hammer was found, bloodied, completely just still soaking in blood. There's blood all over him. And in his car, his Honda Civic, he finds a notebook. Police look in this Honda Civic after they arrest him. They find a notebook. There are five to seven names written on it. Three of those names have been crossed out. Oh my gosh, just like the guy in Billy Madison. <laughs> what the fuck? Interesting analogy. Fuck. All right. But remember? The, no, I don't. What the fuck? Was it? Did Steve Buscemi play that guy? No, it wasn't Steve Buscemi. But at the end of Billy Madison, when he goes to the um, the quiz bowl and he's making amends with a bunch of people and he calls this guy and he was like i'm sorry i made fun of you and the guy like literally after they hung up he he, like crossed his name (laughs) no one knows what you're talking about (laughs) just kidding yeah i do know what you're talking about yeah he's like a creepy guy yeah yeah i I know i don't think that was billy madison was it yeah okay all right maybe Jason Volkovich, 41 years old. He's here to get what he's owed. He was arrested. They find the hammer. They find a notebook. Five to seven names written on the notebook. Three of these names have been completely crossed out. Not only that, but Jason Volkovich had been released from prison just five days ago. <laughs> they are confirming. Steve yes. yes. I th- Okay, I thought so. So let's talk about the first name. Now, Jen, how good is your memory? What... When did I start the story? It was on what day? You don't even know where we're... I was we're... getting over the fact you that don't even Alaska know. was not an island. <laughs> you don't even know what this podcast is called, bro. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's fucked up. <laughs> Wait, this is a podcast? <laughs> uh, okay, so we're talking about the first man right now with his name crossed off. Let's see who this guy is. Four days prior to the attack of Wesley at 9.30 a.m. June 25th, This man right here is attacked. If you want to describe this guy for us. He's obviously an older gentleman as well. Mm -hmm. So what do these old guys know or owe? What do these old guys owe this guy? I mean, like, do they have a gambling problem? Is he a pimp? That's what I wanted you guys to come to. What? Like, is the guy like a muscle? Yeah. To oh, go get go collect these debts. Right. Like a loan shark situation. Yeah. Oh, anyway. I just thought he was a pimp. Can you describe this guy? Older. Thanks, almost, Jen. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> uh, older gentleman, maybe fifties or sixties. Wispy hair. Um, you know. Uh, blue eyes, fair skin. So, as I said, four days prior, 9.30 a.m., June 25th, Charles Albee, A-L-B-E-E, he answers a knock at his door. Now, this is in the morning time. In the morning, at 9.30 in the morning, he hears a knock. Hello? 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 I mean, it's probably UPS or something, you know, or whatever, because they always knock on the door because they know we have dogs and they do it on purpose. Same with DoorDash. Mm -hmm. They do that shit on purpose. Mm -hmm. Maybe anyway. you can, in your instructions, say, we have dogs, please do not knock. We just say leave at the door. I just yeah. kick him in the nads. I don't do that. He doesn't. Charles Albee answers a knock at his door. Now, he is living in this residence, his own home, by himself. He has no roommates or anything. A man, now identified as Jason Volkovic, walks in. So he just answers, he knocks on the door. Who the fuck is this? And this guy just walks in. Okay, I would never, an- I would never answer the door to someone ha- that has a teardrop on their face. But this guy just walks in and he tells this man to sit on the bed. That's all he does. He just walks in and he's like, "Come on, sit on the bed." Is your name Charles Alby, sixty-eight years old? What does he say next? No. Yes. No. What does the the what does get the guy say? I'm I'm here for what I'm owed. <laughs> there you go. I'm here to get what I'm owed, okay? And then he's on the bed. It's just so weird. He's like, what, what you're owed? I, I, I don't know. And then all of a sudden, this guy, he's not. he doesn't have a hammer or anything. He doesn't have any weapon besides his hand. And he just slaps him. Keep your wife's name out of my mouth kind of shit, right? Slaps him. Boo, 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 boo. Four times, just really hard. Like the slap bet in How I Met Your Mother. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just slaps the shit out of him four times. He steps back. He looks around the room and he looks for things of value and he starts taking them. iPods. Oh, shit. No one has an iPod in 2018. <laughs> 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 PlayStation 1s. <laughs> what, 
All right. He looks around the room and just starts taking stuff. Laptop, phone, anything that has money or that anything that he could sell for money. And he doesn't say anything. He just leaves. And the, the victim's just sitting there on the bed, his face all red. <sighs> Big old palm prints on his face. It's like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> what the fuck? You know, now this was the first attack and the one that we started with was the last before he got arrested. So you can see pretty quick escalation within four days, right? Yeah. <sighs> you guys like this? Yeah. Yeah. Damn, I used to, I, I still love Will Smith, but you know, it's, that's what women do to you, man. They make you fucking crazy. You know what I'm saying? That's why he did it. He's a good guy. Okay. Yeah. Huh? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? I All need right. more info. <laughs> Let's talk about the second name that was crossed out. Can you describe this man for us? A different type of demographic, much younger. Mm -hmm. um, dark hair. Glasses. Goatee. Okay. Is that a goatee? I thought the goatee had the uh, mustache and... What is it when it's just there? I don't know. I don't know. Stubble? No. Um, Fu Manchu? No. M muffin chops? No. That's mutton chops. Mutton chops. <laughs> muffin chops. <laughs> muffin chops. That does sound good right now. Muffin chops. Well, what would it? What would that entail? Muffin chops, like pork chops, lamb with chops, and with muffins. This was forty-eight hours later on June twenty-seventh. A knock at the door. This is in the middle of the day. Mm -hmm. Now this time, th this man's name is Andre Barbosa. He's twenty-five years old. So what could this guy owe? Right. I mean, he could still be involved in the same type of gambling situation or something. June 27th, knock on the door. Andre answers. This time, Jason, the mad Wait, slapper. Yeah, mad slapper. The mad slapper. <laughs> oh, has, the mad slapper. I thought you said the man slapper, and I was going to say you should get a business card that says that, like your name. It just says man slapper. The mad slapper comes in. He has two females with him. Oh. Now the shit's changing. They don't say shit. Not at all. One of them pulls out her cell phone, hits the record button. Are you Andre Barbosa, 25 years old? Yes. And then what does he say? I'm here for what I'm owed. <laughs> I'm here to get what I'm owed. And then he says this, sit on that chair. And I put this in there and this is really what he said. But I've never heard anyone say this. So I got really fucking excited. Are when you going to play this. it for us? No, 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 no. Oh. But this is what he said. Sit on the chair or I'll quote bash in your dome. Dome. Wow. That's fucking cool. That's dome? aggressive. Yeah. Yeah. I never heard anyone actually say dome. You know, I don't know. But you mean like I'm seriously. not that impressed by it, but that's OK. <laughs> I'm here to get what I'm owed. Now, the first time, the first victim was slapping. This is two days later. Now, yeah. punching. Uh, uh, uh. The one woman who's recording on her cell phone cracks a little smile like she's enjoying it. The other woman, she just kind of walks around and she's looking at things of value. Mm -hmm. She starts collecting things, you know, like things, laptops. PlayStation 1. <laughs> TVs. <laughs> shit. Watches. Jewelry. Watches, jewelry, money. Anything that has value. This man, Andre, lies there unconscious. And when he wakes up, his truck was gone. His laptop, his phone, they're all gone. He's like, what the fuck? But he's still alive. Mm -hmm. This was a request, by the way. I know it's not technically a murder, but this was a request. All right. So let me show you this, this man one more time. Jason Volkovic. And now that you know everything, tell me, slaphead. If someone can think of a title with the word dome in it, that would be great. Dome denter. What would this guy, what do you think his sentence would be? Breaking and enter. I mean, how many years would you give this guy? 10. You would give him 10 years for assaulting two elderly men and another guy, one almost killing him and then robbing them. You would give him 10 years? I'm not saying what I would give them. I'm saying, I'm guessing. No, no. What, what would you, what do you think he's deserved? Oh my God. You guys 10 to 15 years. 15 years. Okay. Because it could be three attempted murder. So three attempted murder would be three and a half years each for attempted murder? Five years. No, I would you give said him 10 like years. I would give him 15. I would oh, give him 15. 30 years. All right. Well, you guys are terrible at this. Anyway. Well, I never said that I was good at it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Jay I mean, we've had people that have murdered people and gotten less jail time than that. So <laughs> we've had people. <laughs> 
as guests on this podcast, yes. Jason Volkovic pleads guilty to first-degree attempted assault and first-degree robbery. He gets 28 years in prison. Five of those are suspended, and another five are on probation. So uh, so I wasn't that bad. 18 years in, He was given 28. I said 30. Is this enough? I said 15. Is this enough? The Alaskan manslaughter sentence is minimum 20 years, max 99. The first-degree robbery is max 20 years. First-degree assault, no more than 20 years. Okay, so do you guys like that? The sentence? Why, what did they owe? Come on, you guys got to be a part of this. I was going to say, no, I was wondering if we were going to find out what they, what the, they, what, what the purpose Every was. time I ask a question, you always say, stop rushing me. Let's talk about the last victim that I started with, with the hammer. The one that got it the worst, the fractured skull. Wesley Hayes Demarest. If you want to describe what you're seeing now, this is him. Offender against children. Oh. Oh boy. Okay. Now I'm Attempted rooting for the Attempted sexual abuse of a minor <laughs> you're rooting for the slapper yeah violence against children attempted sexual abuse of a minor i don't even think they should use the word minor because what's a minor like one to 17 this was a kindergartner i don't like that wesley fidgeting. <laughs> i can hear it I'm yeah sorry. dude what the i'm fuck? sorry <gasps> you're the worst guest <laughs> That's why I'm not here every week anymore. <laughs> They're kicking me out. Wesley Hayes Demarest, convicted in 2005, attempted sexual abuse on a minor. The, this girl was in kindergarten. He serves nine months in jail. A sex offender program, when he's out, lasted three years. And let me go back to the, the let me go back to the, the time, the June 29th. This man, now that you know he's a sex offender, let me tell you the other things that were said. This man walks in who calls himself the Alaskan Avenger. Okay, I like that. Well, actually, he calls himself the uh, uh, Angel Avenger, but the media changed it. changed it to the Alaskan Avenger. He shows up. Are you Wesley Demarest, 68 years old? Yes. This is what Wesley says. Quote, he told me to lay down on my bed. I said, no. He said, get on your knees. Then he says, quote, I'm an avenging angel. I'm going to met out justice for the people you hurt hurt okay two days later charles alby let's talk about him he's probably not a bad guy right well now i know that that's not true <laughs> registered sex offender and child kidnapper oh no that's him right here and he only got slapped well there was an escalation yeah he was the first guy you're right he got slapped the second guy got punched and the third guy got a hammer to the dome yeah. You know. Well, why did this guy, if he was a kidnapper, why did he only get slapped? Escalation, Jen. I just explained that. The first one gets slapped. The second one gets punched. You know okay. how escalation okay. works? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, what would you have done to him, Jen? <laughs> I feel like you you have some more to say to him, which I guess a lot of people do. I would sit him down and have a stern conversation with him because I don't condone violence. But if I did condone violence, who knows what I would do. Child kidnapper. Two counts of abuse of a minor in 2002. Going back to the house. Quote, he asked if I thought I paid for my crime. I said, yeah. He said, no, <laughs> you didn't pay for it enough. <laughs> I'm here to get what I'm owed. <laughs> He's like a fucking superhero. A lot of people are for this dude. I'm yeah. telling you, a lot of people love this guy. He's got Facebook groups and stuff. It's like, get this guy out of prison type of shit. Let's talk about the second guy, Andreas. Andre, whatever his name is. Fuck, don't know, don't care. This is him right here. Same shit. Same shit. Sex offender, child kidnapper. Kind of changes things, huh? Mm. A little bit. Convicted of child kidnapping, convicted of possession of child pornography, and he was convicted in 2015. Called himself the, quote, avenging angel during the attack. During the attack. That was the punch attack. I am the avenging angel. And then he, like, transforms. Fucking crazy. <laughs> he grows wings and flies away. <laughs> This is the guy right here again. Now he looks all hot. You see how I do these stories? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, that's like a thirst trap photo there. <laughs> thirst trap. <laughs> <laughs> Never this heard such thing. A what? He's a mason. Oh, he's got a mason thing on. Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't see that the first time. That's weird. 
I didn't know Masons are supposed to, I don't, I don't know. I don't think it's a public, public thing. Yeah. Maybe he just thought it looked cool. I want to be a Mason. So if you're a Mason out there, I am. We know a Mason. Yeah, I know. I, you want to be a Mason to be a Mason or you want to be a Mason because then you can say that you were in a cult. No, I want to freaking expose the Masons, the Ma- which is fucking nothing. Probably dome daddy. I think you're, I think you Ooh. win. I, I liked, think you win. I like Sh- Shermer on other one, which was, uh, Hammer time? no, that was another one. Pedome files. Pe- what is it? Pedom files. Like pedophiles, pedom. Yeah. I like Dome Daddy. That's good. I just can't pronounce your name. I don't know. Sham Shamarama. 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 Lauren's Shamarama. a Mason. Lauren, you're a Mason? Oh, okay. Well, I would like to be a Mason. Not a brick Mason, Jen. A Mason. Just so I can get out of parking tickets and shit. <laughs> I don't, I don't think that's, that's how it works. works. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's not like a handicap sticker. <laughs> All right. Or excuse me, a disabled sticker. I don't a disabled person sticker. I don't want to get. All right. So that. Nicole's going to read a five page letter that oh, he God. wrote. It's only. It's not that bad, but it's going to tell about his childhood and everything else. But now we're talking about the the mad slapper, the dome daddy. That's it. Now we're talking about dome daddy. <laughs> He was interviewed by the Alaska Post-Dispatched, and he said as a child he was physically and sexually abused by his stepdad. Mm, Poor thing. Quote, after this adoption took place, I was beaten with a two-by-four that was custom-made for the purpose of inflicting pain, etc. Also, I suffered through repeated molestation at his hands. His father, adopted father, his stepfather, Larry Lee Fulton, was found guilty of second-degree abuse of a minor, which was him, and in 1989, and was only given a three-year suspended sentence. He was, quote, ordered to stay away from his victim, which was, you know, Jason, who he was living with. He says that after he was given this sentence and the order to stay away from his victim, was, which is in the next room, he, quote, returned immediately to the home and isolated me out. After being physically and mentally abused by a predator, my life was forever changed. I literally gave my own existence no value or concern. I became a thief and a liar, and I went on to make many poor choices throughout my life. All right. I want to say one thing before you read this. The, the letter is really good. It's going to like you're going to really appreciate it. But this is really cool. And he did redact this statement because he he thinks he should pay for his crime. He's he eventually now he's taking the stance that violence is not the answer. What I did was not not, you know, I would wouldn't do that again. And he he wants to deter anyone else from taking these actions. He feels like he's the monster now, you know. But when he first got arrested, he sent a three page letter that said, and this is pretty crazy, he would plead guilty to the assaults on one condition. And that condition was that his sentence not be longer than the combined prison terms of the victim's alleged, you know, mm-hmm. minors. Right. He said he would serve all of their sentences, which I think the, like Edward or the first one we talked about with the hammer, Mm -hmm. he received like three years and half of that was in probation or whatever. He said he would serve all of these sentences consecutively back to back. And that's how he would plead guilty, which the total would be because he's in prison now for 28 years. The total of that would be eight years and nine months. Are you serious? For for basically raping my minors kindergartner and having child pornography that's pretty that's pretty shocking that's very upsetting yeah Yeah. i do not like that i do not he later recanted and said you know what this isn't the stance that i want to have in public violence is not the answer and stuff like that this guy's a fucking dude i i have his address on you'll see on the this letter he puts his address i want to write this dude and be like man like when you get out like you need to you're a good dude, man. I, I don't know. I, I get it. And now he wants to, you know, take the stance that don't don't act like me. Don't do this. It's not worth it. You know what I'm saying? 
But anyway, well, I want you to read this letter if if you want to. I'm wondering if, I mean, if he was a victim himself, if it was part of like a, a trauma response and if they thought about that in his sentencing. Hmm. Because... Ooh, that's an interesting point. Yeah, be, because without without that background, I would say 28 years is like sufficient. But I don't know. If he wasn't aiming to kill them, I don't know if 20... I, I don't know. I mean, I guess... But at the same time, well, how he, can we he, be fair if if you know what I mean? It's it's a it's a very thin line because well, because of the crimes of the other people. I think that's like it definitely like skews how exactly. you think the punishment should be. Yeah, it does. But if you think about like, well, the only other time where you can see that that impacts the sentence is a crime of passion, mm-hmm. and I guess you could kind of argue it. It could be like a crime of passion because like that's because that's the only other time where you like the the situation impacts the you, sentence you could say too. that it was but i don't know if that would hold up because he like sought these people out and planned True. the attack so i True. don't think it would it qualify. was definitely motivated but i mean i i'm just curious if they looked at his background as a survivor when they were sentencing him natasha you said where's the petition to get this guy out this was one right here yeah and i like what steph said not the hero we deserve but the one we need Oof, deep. 24,000 signatures, 25,000 signatures. This was when Trump was in president. There's a lot of people that do not want this guy in prison. But as you, you'll you hear, he thinks that he should be in prison. And I don't know. I, I, I really, honestly, I, I really hope this guy gets stays on the, the narrow, the good narrow when he gets out. I mean, I think they should have Did you get that taken deal? that plea deal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, these three pedophiles only served less than nine years. I mean, what the fuck? And now this guy who slaps him, you know, is getting 28 years? That's, fu- that's oh, man. I'm wondering if it, if it would be less if he didn't use the hammer on the third guy. Yeah, that's a yeah, really maybe. good point. Well, he explains why he used the hammer. He didn't want to, but I didn't mention this before because it kind of, you know, give away too much. But... The, the first man, his name was uh, Wesley Demarest. He actually, before he agreed to get on his knees, he punched him. Like, just as like, fuck it, ah! you know, went over there. And then this guy lost his temper, which is still bad. Yeah. You know, but that's why he just read this letter. An open letter to the community. I'm writing today in an attempt to correct a poor message I sent last fall in the form of a plea offer via a letter to the Alaska Dispatch News. In that letter, I suggested that my sentence should be no longer than those served by my victims and my abuser. That suggestion resonated with many in the public, but I write to correct that sentiment now. There is no place for vigilante justice in an ordered society, and I want to deter others that find themselves in a similar position as I found myself in the summer of 2016. To those who understand how it feels to live through abuse and carry it with you, let me share my story in an effort to prevent with a petition, repetition. I was born here in Anchorage in 1975. My father adopted me around the age of four. Both of my parents were dedicated Christians and had and had us in the church service ava- available two or three each week. So you can imagine the horror and confusion I experienced when this man who adopted me began using the late, late night prayer sessions to molest me. Also, he beat me with a custom made two by four. I recall the scribed handle with the wrapped tape to protect his hands and holes shrilled the length of the device. He preferred to use two-handed grip and beat me between my butt and the backs of my knees. These beatings were quite frequent and and some days it was difficult to stand upright. My older brother ran away from home at some point and I was devastated that he would abandon me with these people. He was eventually arrested as a runaway and decided to tell the police the truth. As a result of the investigation, they charged and later convicted my adoptive father, Larry Lee Fulton, of second degree abuse of a minor. I am ashamed to recall the sessions when I was questioned privately by the prosecutor. For some reason, I had downplayed the abuse. I remember that my family had decided had decided my brother was wrong to have gone to the police and he shouldn't have told anyone. I can attest that ultimately it didn't really matter what was said or done. His plea deal gave him a suspended sentence, not one single day in jail for beating and molesting his children. 
Immediately after this occurred, they pulled me out of school, sold the house in Anchorage, and moved us out to Wasilla. There I was pla- there I was placed in homeschool and the isolation was complete. The state of Alaska did no follow-ups, no periodic check-ins, no mandatory counseling for the kids involved, nothing. I was 13 or 14 when my brother ran away. By the time I began thinking of run- running away, I had always been a hard worker, commercial fishing, working for hunting guides, bagging groceries at Safeway, but no amount of work could keep me away from home all the time. I began saving whatever money I could. After climbing out my bedroom window one night in Wasilla, I came back the next day to retrieve my belongings. I found what they were allowing me to keep in trash bags on the front porch. They withheld my driver's license and social security card. I recall my mother saying they didn't want to facilitate my flight into Some of it's kind of hard to read. I then did my first stint in juvenile hall. Nine months later, I was out, out soon returned for similar crimes. Most of all, I feared being sent home, but it never came up. Being a thief and a liar fit nearly fit nicely with my lack of self-worth, my silent understanding that I was worthless, a throwaway. The foundations land in my youth never went a- the foundations laid in my youth never went away. They simply re- remained hidden in everything. I had started down a long winding path of deception and self-abuse. I became a full-time regular pot smoker to try to dull the pain effects of my upbringing. I attempted to hold regular jobs and was successful for periods of time, but without any support system or any real family circle to relate to, I continually made poor choices that cost me. That's just about his life. Yeah. I can put that on the website, but he talks about how he was abused and Star Wars says this takes us to the summer of 2016. This takes us to the summer of 2016. I was living simply, taking joy and satisfaction in the basics little things like grocery shopping, mowing the lawn, pulling weeds brought to me great happiness. I began to hear things in the community. That kids were being molested, rumors of men abusing their positions of authority to take advantage of children. I thought back to my experiences as a child and felt the overwhelming Desire. desire to act. I took matters into my own hands and assaulted these pedophiles. In one instance, if you want to. Upon breaking into the house, the man I immediately began punching me. I reached for a weapon, a hammer. I fractured his skull. Or were you talking to me or were you talking to Nicole when you said No, you, you, you can keep going. <laughs> I just realized I just keep started going. talking. He, he said, uh, that's enough of the letter. Okay. He says that he wants a story to serve as a deterrent. And he's talking about for anyone else who will take... Vigilante, vigilante. Vigi- vigilante, vigilante actions against uh, pedophiles and yada, yada, yada. I urge anyone who reads this to engage the proper channels to affect positive change. Do not glamorize my actions. Believe me when I say this is nothing. Glam- There's nothing glamorous about my life now. And that's his uh, address. I-, I am thinking I'm g- going to write him. I don't know. Seems like a cool dude. Mm. I'd probably hang out with him. I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think, man? That was a very interesting case. Mm. Yes. Thank you. Who requested that shit? Did anyone say? Um, fuck. Look, can you look on the Discord right quick and see who requested it? No. Oh. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, I can't log in for my computer and I don't have my phone on me. Just one more thing before we uh, stop. I just want to, he says, quote, children should be able to play in the streets and parks and go to church without the threat of pedophiles lingering around them. My heart may have been broken long ago, but with all my being, I support every child in pursuit of their dreams. It looks like Natasha sent to. A- all right. So Natasha. Anyway, that is the Alaskan Avenger story. He's still in prison and he's got quite a bit, a, a quite a big support group. I don't know if they're ever going to let him out earlier. I mean, they, they did reduce his sentence. So 28 years and then they took five off for suspended. So and then another five on probation. So 18 years. And that was in 2018. So he's already served four. So he's got another how many? Well, um, <laughs> six. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Fourteen. What the fuck? Six. What the fuck? Fourteen. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> what the fuck? Dude, I threw you like <laughs> one of those soft. Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> I threw, uh, you, I threw you an easy pitch. Okay. 
<laughs> and you hit yourself okay, in the back. Wait, just like that, just like that, uh, that giffy that they sent it up. <laughs> yeah. Whiffed it. Yeah. It's all good. Fine. All right. I'll that's get the next one, maybe. That's the Alaskan Avenger. So I hope you guys like that. We're going to stay on here, live chat, for another story. We're actually covering more of the Eileen Warnos case. And I wanted to finish it up, but you know how I am. So this is going to be, this is going to be. There's going to be one more, I'm just going to tell you right now. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll be back in 10 minutes. Yeah, but we'll be back in 10 minutes. For so, Supremos. For Supremos. And just be on the Patreon. We're going to post the the link, an, an unlisted link for you guys. So, And that's more of a conversational thing. If you want to be a part of that and you're not a Supremo, talkmore.com slash join. And if you just want to see the live stream after, the second tier there is will allow you to see right after we finish. And that's all I got. So this is the Talk More to Me podcast. Thank you guys so much for being here. And thanks for listening. And like I said, we'll be back in 10 minutes. All right. Until next time, good night to you lovely, lovely people.